Minasan, konnichiwa. It is me, the Sony Samurai. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Sony Samurai. Today, we will be looking at a product that I have come to f find in our local Tokyo Electronics Department, simply known as the Action Cam. The Action Cam M. 1034K. Like most Japanese main marketing, uh, models are often oddly named, and I understand why it's easier to name something by numbers and specific Roman letters than it is to give it a specific name. Um, I'm always out for finding a new camera or electronic or something you can't find in the Western world such as America or Canada. And so this is the M1034K. Now the reason I picked this up is I may have quite a few cameras at my disposal, but none of them are action cameras. Now action cameras fit a very specific category because of the fact that if I was to take my full-size camera, such as this A7R4, I can't just plop that on my head and go running with it. I mean, I might be able to. I'd look incredibly stupid and my neck would probably give out eventually. It's not as light as one might think. So that's the that's part of the problem to most main cameras and like phones Phones can do an okay job sometimes. Um, I think people give phones way too much credit. They're not action cams. Some can pass for some decent image stabilization, but for the most part, no. Just, just, no. But here we have this little guy. Now, this camera is interesting for a lot of reasons. Come on, focusing. There we go. This camera is interesting for a lot of reasons, namely due to the fact that it's really cheap. I picked this up for the equivalent of about 70 US dollars. Uh, as you can see right here, it is seven. Wow, come on, focusing. Oh, sorry, uh, it's about 7,029 yen, which is really cheap. For a camera, that's really cheap. And so I'm trying to give this little guy the benefit of the doubt when it comes to is it worth buying? And that's what we're going to be going over in the next few videos of walking vlogs and taking my little motorcycle out for a spin and seeing how well does it stabilize, how well does it hold up overall. But for this video, we're going to do a general discussion. So for the 7,000 yen, you get the camera, a little harness with it. You get the plastic protection case. So let's see here. So this is made by a company... I think I, I think it's made by this company the the boxing the box wording is kind of hard to understand by movio now on the on it it says Wi-Fi 4k ultra HD I really question that I really do um, it has okay so Wi-Fi uh, Kamodo I don't know what that exactly means I think car mode yeah, car mode. Everything's in Japanese. Um, so, I can speak basic Japanese pretty well, but katakana is difficult for me because I try to think of things in English when I'm reading it, and sometimes that's not as fun as one might think. It's true. It's really hard sometimes. So, it has a 2-inch LCD screen. That's a generous... Uh, that's a generous two inches there. Uh, it might be. I think it might be borderlining that. I, I'm not sure. It says it's so. It looks like a YouTube compatible. It's 90 minute record sessions. 
Um, let's see. Sa Saikuru something e Ega. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Thirty meter water resistance and a hundred seventy degree view angle. So its specs are actually really low, and I think this is why the seventy dollar price tag is appealing for anyone wanting an action cam at a low price. So let's see here. On the back it says. Uh, Lensaizu uh, image sensor is 1 slash 3.2 Sony IMX 175 so it's a it's like a one inch sensor I think that's what it's talking about it's really hard to know um, there's a difference between knowing a language and knowing a language on technical terms um, let's see Sukurin Saizu, two, two inchy. Okay, so that's the two inch screen size. Um, don't expect a lot for that back LCD. It's it's not that clear. Uh, but that's not really what I'm using it for. Let's see, so here's the, here's the record functions on here. 4K 30 FPS, 2K 30 FPS, 1080 60 FPS, 1080 30 FPS, Oh, and that's 1080p. Uh, not that that really makes that much difference. I've tested P and I, and P is better because it's progressive, but even if it was I, it doesn't really make that much difference. Uh, 720p, 120fps, that's where you get your performance mode. Um, 720p... 60 FPS and 720p 30 FPS. So this doesn't drop under 720. So you're getting at least good widescreen effects. Uh, 170 degree uh, uh, screen screen size. Uh, MP4 and JPEG formats. So you're not going to get raw out of this, and you're not going to get raw images. So you're getting basic movie function and basic picture. I have not even tried the camera out on here. I'm more of a photographer more than a videographer, so I will be putting the camera to its to the test. But I'm not expecting a lot out of it, honestly. Um, again, I'm going to try and give this a fair a fair go, but price is price to performance is a hard thing to truly match. Let's see here. USB 2.0 and HDMI 1.4. So, uh, you gotta go with. Come on. Wow. Okay. I don't know why my camera does not want to autofocus today. Uh, but, yeah, going back to micro USB for this, my least favorite USB ever. Um. <laughs> I love Type C. Going from Type C back to Micro is really hard for me to do. The only thing that does not bother me on that is having the the Slim Vita, and that does not bother me like whatsoever. Just for that, um, mostly because Micro is not a proprietary USB, which is nice. Unlike the original Vita or the Walkman MP3 player. Oh, that cable. That cable. Okay, so let's see. It has a 750 milliamp battery. Now, here's my issue with this. If you're wanting a camera that you can swap batteries in and out like a GoPro, a Sony RX0 Mark II, an Osmo DJI, a DJI Osmo camera, action camera, um, anything like that, this is not for you. So this gets about 90 minutes worth of recording and let's just say for the traveler on the go, you better have a battery bank because that's the only way you're really going to charge this on the go. And that's super annoying. I don't even know if you can charge. Actually, no, you cannot charge and play at the same time. When I unboxed this, I was trying to turn it on while it was charging. 
and let's see here's the sun and it was not working that way so that's already going to be a slight issue for a lot of people This is this is the size of the let's here, I'll take Yeah, so this is the overall size and I'll show you the screen. Inception. <clears throat> but yeah, there's the screen size. It's not even two inches of a visible screen. It's just physically two inches and then whatever the crop factor is. Which I'm not a bezel Nazi, so I don't care about that. A lot of people like to complain about a lot of products because of bezel. Like my laptop doesn't have the nicest bezels. I don't really care. It, that's not something that bothers me. I think that bothered me more when widescreen TVs first came out because of the bezel bars on everything. Like, oh, look at our big 65-inch TV. But watch, like, almost a third of it get taken away by the black bar bezels. That, that drove me insane. And it's like, uh, I'll take full screen for now. Thank you. All right, let's see here. So we have the 750 milliamp battery. It has a 90 minute record limit. And that's at 1080p 60 FPS. So that's actually better than most people might think. Um, typically in action shots, you're getting maybe 20 minutes of good footage if you are out doing sports. I have yet to put this to the test for that. Um, I will be taking it out later today and actually testing it. We've been having a bit of a rainy season right now, a rainy week since I bought this uh, about a week ago, so I haven't really had a good opportunity to test everything the way that I'd like to. Also, where I could tell that this was quite the cheap camera was putting the SD card in the slot took effort. It did not just want to go in and that's that's not a good sign. <laughs> I don't I don't care what product that is. If you can't get your SD card put in, um, there is some issues to that. But I will say, right off the bat, it does look pretty good in its little case. Not gonna lie. Come on, come on, Sony, focus. I don't know why the Sony's not focusing today. I feel like is maybe it's because I'm using indoor lighting. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Let's see. It weighs 56 grams. That is one thing I will give this camera. Is it is probably the lightest camera I have ever held. The case feels heavier than the camera does. And for a case being heavy, I'm okay with that. If it's a good case, I'm cool with that. Um, this is it. it does give you quite a bit. Uh, it gives you the case, it gives you a little screw-on mount. It's kind of a weird mount because it uses these strange screws to... Well, I'll, I'll give you a little example. So when you put things on, you have to like slide these in as the attachment screws. I've never owned an action camera personally. I had the Sony RX0 Mark II a few years back. Uh, two years ago actually. Um, it was a nice little camera but it didn't... I don't know. My expectations of what I wanted for it and what it actually was and now I realize I wish I didn't sell it on eBay. Oh I miss that little camera. Like 
That little RX-0 and this, just off first impressions alone, is night and day. That little guy is kind of heavy. It is solidly built. It's made out of metal. Um, beautiful screen quality. It's tough as nails. You could put, um, you can actually put an actual mic in it, like a road mic or any little wired mic in there. Um, you could put a small rig cage on there and you could, you could just attach so much stuff to it. It's so cool. The only issue I have with that camera, and actually I have two issues with that camera, just two. Okay, correction, three. One, price. The Sony RX0 Mark II is stupid expensive. It's not really better than its competition. It is solidly built. I will give it that. But if it was half the cost, I would be defending it 100%. Number two, image stabilization. Sony needs to get on image stabilization. Uh, Sony has some of the sharpest images on the market, but <sighs> IBIS and IS need a major upgrade. Major upgrade. And number three, uh, it's low lighting, was actually the thing that made me sell it. Um, I tried taking it out to the lake for a night for a night walk to do like a really cool animal um, observation with scorpions in the dark. And if you take black lights, uh, you can you can see scorpions glow in the dark. It's it's really cool. If you haven't never done that and you live in a place that has scorpions, get a black light so the purple light. And if you shine it over them, they they glow in the dark. Uh, it, it's really cool, but. When it comes to action cameras, I've been trying to find something doable, and my teacher got a GoPro Hero 6, and that's actually a really nice camera. Uh, we had fun with it one day, and we found a good bargain on it on eBay, so I'm up to trying all different action cameras, but for now, we're going to be trying this one out. I know I haven't really said too much positives about it only due to the fact that first impressions are not in its favor. Its price tag is the only appealing thing about it right now. Maybe we'll get some really good uh, video footage of it. We get, we'll see. Also, one thing that I need to point out for this Make sure you only get a 64 gig SDXC because it can't go over that, which is really frustrating. Um, that's that's part of the problem I have with a lot of cheap cameras is they have a cap out on the space, which wouldn't really be a problem, but it's just annoying especially if you're one of those people who like to go all day long. But I think because of the battery length being only about 90 minutes, and actually I don't even know if it's 90 minutes. I've never really tried going farther than that. Um, between its record limit and its battery not being interchangeable, I mean, it makes kind of sense that you would take the SD card out and just upload it to your computer when you get home to charge it. That's a thought. I don't know, but we're going to be giving it a go, and I will I will try and make the best out of this, but I think the best people that this could be for is like a young kid, a teenager who doesn't have much money, but they want to, they want to like go dirt bike riding, skateboarding, surfing, rollerblading, biking, whatever the case may be, and they want a camera to record. This could be for them. This is only part one video, so... I will have more to discuss on this, but this is my first, this is the first of many, and we will be discussing lots of tech, movies, games, whatever the case may be, and I hope you enjoy the videos to come. Matane. Alright. Testing out the new Movio M10. 
1034K. So, this little camera, I have to say it is really light. Like, if you had it clipped to your side, you wouldn't even know it's there unless it's like going up and down, hitting you on the side like things typically tend to do to me. Um, so, some good and bad to this camera, and this is my first real field filming, so this is just walking only. I'll have uh, another video where I put it on the motorcycle and go for a ride on that. I think I'll have better luck with that than I will um, on foot. This camera is really cheap. And that's both good and bad. I'm trying to look at the good to this. Like, it... <laughs> It does not have a lot of modern advancements. Like, I am spoiled being a Sony fan. 
for how much Sony puts really good tech in everything. Um, this only has USB 2.0, so that means charging and uh, data transfer will be slow. I had a hard time just putting the SD card in, honestly. It did not want to just like click into place. That was a troubling first sign. I'm just trying to look at this as though for $70, what can it really get me? And it can do 4K30. I know that sounds weird to say now in 2021, almost 2022, where 4K60 is pretty standard on many devices. But then I also look at the other side. This isn't $200. This isn't three to $400. This isn't seven to $800 Sony GoPro. Um, this isn't an outrageous price. I'm looking at this like, okay, what if a young child or teenager uh, wanted to do sports videos on a bike, dirt bike, uh, skateboard, snowboard, whatever, action, action scenes, and, you know, they don't have a lot of money. I'm just trying to look at the good in this. Uh, the, the crazy thing, I'm, I won't even know until I get to, uh, until I get to where I'm going, so I don't even know if this does audio. It has no, uh, microphone port. I'm really missing the uh, RX-0 Mark II right now. That thing had some flaws, but holy moly, was that thing built like a tank and had features. I didn't know this until I was looking up stuff just the other day on Action Cams. The RX-0 Mark II, aside from being 4K60, can also do, um, I don't know the resolution, but it can do a thousand frames a second. So it has super duper slow-mo, which is pretty cool. One thing I am not loving that for this as a vlogging setup is the screen does not do anything. The screen does not um, flip around, it doesn't move, so you kind of just have to guess if you're vlogging yourself. So this is a better uh, straightforward camera. <laughs> Let me <get> you off. <laughs> Cute little dog. I love dogs. I like cats too. Dogs are just more fun. You can't take cats places. It's not World of Warcraft where I can tame a, a tiger and have it follow me around. That'd be awesome. Except I still think I'd rather have a, um, like a wolf, like D-Dog from the Phantom Pain. I need to play that game again. I started to play it on the PS3, but I'm playing it in Japanese. And where the missions go from go to point B e and do thing, now it's go to point B, do something, then go to point C, and a finished objective there with specifics. And, you know, if you're fluent in the language that you're reading, it's not really that bad. But see, here's the problem. Japanese is not the same as just reading uh, Roman text. Some of the kanjis they use are really confusing. And then in pixelated PS3 graphics, it gets way worse. Way worse. So, trying to read what the game's trying to tell me. If I hear it, I can kind of understand. But they don't always explain it very well, even if you call on the radio. So, there is that. I have this set up on my little Sony vlogging grip. 
and the little housing shelf for the camera doesn't have like a washer or like a locking screw so I have to be careful that it doesn't keep spinning because there's nothing to keep it from continuously spinning it's not a bad setup but it's just one more little thing that I miss about the RX-0 is that if you have the little Sony vlogging grip for that it's so useful you can use the buttons to record and shoot photo or zoom in and out just on the grip itself and it's not wireless like the one I'm using I have the newer one now um, but you just plug it into the little USB mini the PS the PS3 controller USB the one that never really caught on um, for <laughs> obvious reasons but uh you know the RX-0 the only flaw I can give it is its crazy price tag if it was like $200 cheaper I may have just gone with it again but for right now I'm going to stick with this little guy and then I think my next action cam that I want to test out because it's really not that expensive is the um, Sony FDR X3000 everybody says good things about that camera it has high quality great image stabilization the only thing I've heard it could use a little work with is the um, is the audio but that can be fixed with a with like a road mic I don't know if Sony makes mics like I know they have their digital shotgun mics but I've never seen a Sony wired mic maybe they do I don't know it's really hard to find everything Sony's done just because they have so much and not all of it's easily categorized and it is raining this is why I did not take the motorcycle today I can handle a little rain while riding but like if I'm not in my water not water resistant but water enduring shorts and jacket I don't like getting soaked unless I'm purposely getting soaked that's different the worst is wearing jeans and getting them soaked especially on a cold day jeans take forever to dry oh yeah let's talk about the big elephant in the room with this camera so one thing that'll be hard to give this a really good score and I know I rip on the on the smaller Sony cameras the RX series and cameras similar to the RX series is that yeah those have short battery life but I can buy a surplus of those batteries even if they're not Sony brand I can still get a ton of them and just have them in a little ready-to-go bag and that's fine and dandy it's annoying when you're continuously shooting and you have to swap but it's at least serviceable this camera doesn't even have that going for it this camera has a built-in one battery non-changeable setup and they say it goes about 90 minutes which is actually pretty good for an action cam if you have one specific thing going um, I think this is where you'll want a battery bank I have quite a few so I'm just going to dedicate one of them to this and just keep the micro USB with it still my least favorite charging cable of all time say what you want about PlayStation's USB mini or USB B type B I think it's called I don't know but at least with the PlayStation one you can't just like easily bend and break that one the micros break so easily I've always been pretty good with mine I think I've only ever had one bend and break but I think that's also because I keep children away from my cables I'm really overprotective about my stuff because I've had children break my stuff before 
not happy about that. I remember my cousin, who if you're watching this, I'm still upset about this. Um, I had the Guitar Hero World Tour band set. I loved that set. That was one of my favorite games. And when he was like five, I think, five or six, oh my goodness, this child was out of control. But I, I leave the room and I come back to find him and uh, another little girl and they completely twist the cymbal head clear off. I wanted to beat that child that day. Like when people say, hey, how come you don't let children see your stuff? It's like because I like my stuff to be like new the entire time I own it. That's why. All my cameras still look brand new. Okay, to be fair, the A7R4 typically, uh, I have to wipe that down all the time with alcohol wipes. Gets a lot of dust. That's just because I go out a lot. Not because I'm rough with my camera. Sometimes that dirt really gets in there. When I had my first professional camera, the A7 III, love that little guy. Um, that one would get dust all the time because I went out in the desert. That can't be helped. Desert blow. Literally, the wind blows all over. But I am glad I don't live in a desert anymore. You'd have to pay me a lot of money to go on a job that requires me to go to the desert. Oh yeah, today is Box Day. Yay, Box Day. Fun stuff. So far, this camera's holding up pretty good. Um, you know, seventy dollars is pretty cheap. Boy, if the RX Zero Mark One was was that cheap, I would have snatched that up instantly. But Mark One's still really good too. Mark One and Two. The Mark Two is definitely better, but not by like a ton. Um, I just like the Mark II because it has the flip-up screen, it has 4K internal, um, if you get the little small rig cage and put a road mic on the side, it is absolutely wonderful. And then of course the Sony vlogging grip, I suggest getting the small one, not the big one, because the big one requires battery and it's Bluetooth. So. Uh, it's not it's not so good for the RX zero or the RX um, 100 series just because those are point and shoots so it's better to have the little cable to just directly plug in it saves you a lot of hassle it's one less battery to think about um, yeah it's it's just it's a better setup I really like the RX 100 series I've just never owned one because they're really expensive and point and shoots, I've never had the best luck with long term usage. I remember owning a Fujifilm point and shoot one time, and I left it in the car in winter and it froze. And it would technically turn on and it technically works, but the problem is uh, the zoom, because it was one of those bridge cameras, the zoom wouldn't zoom in and out anymore. So it basically became worthless. I think I spent a hundred dollars on that camera, so whatever. Not a big f fan of zoom, like mechanical zoom lenses. I like internal. It's just better that way. Two of the professional stuff, like the 100 to 400 G Master Sony lens. It has a creep zoom, but it's prof that, that thing is way professionally designed. That's a great lens. I have the 200 to 600 though, so I feel like I have a much better lens. The only thing the G Master does better, it's a tiny bit faster, tiny bit, 
and it has a better f-stop but I don't shoot at low light with my zoom unless it's moonshots and so like f4 versus f5.6 to 6.3 it's only two and three stops difference so I don't think it's that big of a deal but if you have a 100 to 400 kudos to you I don't dislike that lens but when it came down to the price $500 less for a, for a much farther zooming lens that's internal zooming zooming not a creep factor there's a big difference between the two 200 to 600 is also one of my absolute favorites whether it's for filming something really far away like a boat a plane a baseball game whatever the case may be that's a really good zoom I primarily use it for wildlife shooting not so much video but whatever the whatever it needs it is a good lens um, I haven't tested it out personally but it can do the 30 frames a second on the Sony a1 so that's pretty cool that's where the 70 to 200 G Master and 24 to 70 G Master need a update. They are old. Same with the 85 G Master. They're not bad by any stretch of imagination, but Sony needs to do two things. They need to make new versions of those, also a refresh of the 70 to 200 and 24 to 70 and the 16 to 35 f4s make those smaller lighter and faster that that would be nice because all those lenses are old now they're not bad i love my 70 to 200 f4 it's probably my favorite for going out and just shooting without carrying a bunch of gear on me i have favorites for different reasons it's funny because my best lens for overall quality is my 135G Master. It is probably my least used lens just because it's just a weird focal length. It's hard to use it properly because it's like I'd rather have a 70 to 200 because of the good zoom factors. But 135 is just locked in a weird spot. It's really good for a studio, and I think that's my problem, is I don't work in a studio. is here. Okay, well, this is where I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you on the next video. Part 2 blog. We're in semi decent light. Got this at 1080 60 FPS. Walking home. Been wanting to do more with this thing, but sadly, it's just been one of those lazy weeks.
seems a little janky. It likes to wobble on the little tripod. <sighs> Hope everyone's been doing well. Huh, there goes a Geo Metro. Don't see too many of those in Japan. I like the idea of Geo Metro, but when Japan already has far better cars that aren't owned by General Motors, the worst car manufacturer of all time, there's really no point in owning a Geo Metro here. Your parts are more expensive. You have to import the things, so that adds price to it. Um, it really doesn't do any better than a Honda or a tiny little, uh, any little K car here. So I don't see the point. I noticed that people who own American cars in Japan are more of car enthusiasts than they are, uh, just looking for a good car, because if that's the case, Toyota, Honda, Suzuki, Subaru, um, even Mitsubishi are far better choices. And of course, Nissan. Yeah, unless you're, unless the people you meet here are real enthusiasts about stuff from outside of Japan, you're not going to see too many non-Japanese vehicles. Come to think of it, I don't think I've seen a single Kia since I've been here. And a lot of that can be summarized to... Korean products are not popular in Japan. The only Korean product you will find are Samsung phones. And even Samsungs are not marketed as Samsung. They are marketed as Galaxy. They keep the Samsung name off of it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I'm going to have to keep my eyes open for Kia, because I have not seen anything Kia. Like, whatsoever. Yeah, Kia or Hyundai. I don't think I've seen either of those, and then of course, then there's the, um, uh, I don't even, I don't even know all the Korean car companies, honestly. I just know those two. I'm sure there's more. Korea's auto manufacturer is kind of weird, because, uh, like, Korean, the Korean government has this strong, like, they pool all resources to the big companies like Samsung and Hyundai and um, I love those birds and uh, they basically let the giants grow where the little guy doesn't really get the love and America is really no different anymore And the virus of unknown specified origins has completely shown that when companies like Walmart, Best Buy, Amazon uh, just grow exponentially and all the little companies have to shut down. It'll be interesting going over this footage. I still haven't really had a chance to look over anything on this yet. I haven't been sick, but I've just been super fatigued the last couple weeks. Just no energy. Sore body. Always tired. I know a lot of it has to do with my diet, but I don't really diet that bad, honestly, all things considered.
Could I eat better? Yeah. Am I eating as bad as I could be? I'm gonna say no. So I'm still not obese. I'd like to lose weight. I'd like to actually have abs, but I'm still not like more like in the danger zone. Yeah, I see cars here that I have no idea what they even are. Oh yeah, this guy owns a Jeep. That's one of the few American cars I see. That's how you can tell he's probably an outdoors guy. If he likes the Jeep. Need to get like a chest harness for this camera. I don't know. I still have to go over the files, see how well everything works. I really don't want to edit anything, so I want to see what it looks like uh, straight out of camera. Because to me, that's where it really matters. I don't care how much post production you can do, there are post production wizards who can make the worst cameras look amazing. kind of like where I have huge issues when it comes to uh, my father's opinion on photography. I believe in getting the shot taken correctly the first time and having no post-production. My favorite shots have never been edited. Ever. And I personally like the JPEG that comes straight out of my cameras. And with, like, my A7R4, with 61 megapixels, I don't even care how much refined down they are as a JPEG. They're still far better than anything that came out 10, 20 years ago. They are still leagues better than most cameras today. So, even if that those JPEGs are, like... 30 megapixels. That's still better than most professional cameras. So, just saying. But my father likes to think, oh, it's all about what you do after the fact. It's all about those raws. It's all about how you can change it after. It's like, no, that just proves you're a really bad photographer if you have to fix everything post-production. And I get it. On DSLRs, it was harder than mirrorless because you couldn't see exactly what was going on at the time you were taking the shots. But he refuses to accept what mirrorless can do and how far mirrorless has come. And I like... I, I have to agree with uh, Roger Deakin, one of the best cinematographers in Hollywood. If you don't know who he is, check up his, uh, his film history. He, he's amazing. But he shoots digital. And he said, he, I agree with his opinion. I mean, I had the same opinion before I even knew who Roger Deacon really was. But he says that, uh, you know, it's not the camera. And it's not old or new style. It's who's behind the camera. So it all comes down to... You know, who's behind the camera, how well are they performing, and where are they taking their, their vision. And I agree with this, whether it's video or photo, you know, the guy behind the camera is more important than the camera itself. 
but this is exactly where I am a Sony fan in the Sony make-believe strategy it's is it the is it the person yes is it the equipment yes both are equally important you can't give the world the greatest artist a crayon and expect them to paint the greatest picture ever conceived it's just not going to happen now I'm sure that crayon and their skill is a match made in heaven but there's only so far you can take that it's the same with anything give the world's greatest race car driver the world's car he's still probably gonna lose there's only so far you can take bad stuff and still expect professional top rate results that's just how it goes just like I may have an umbrella right now but it's really tiny and I'm still getting wet not quite as wet as without it but still it, what happens when you leave your full-size umbrellas at your friend's house who lives two cities up or six stops by train and I haven't bothered to go back and get it yet because that takes time and money I don't always have the energy to do it I actually have three umbrellas but my other one is really really big and it's shaped like a samurai sword it even has a katana hilt um, but the only problem with that umbrella is it's really annoying for where do I put it when I'm done with it because it doesn't like hang up anywhere so I'm taking the little guy because it fits in my backpack I think if it was raining harder this morning I would have taken the full-size umbrella but it wasn't the fun thing about learning new languages is random people's conversations get a lot more interesting when you can pick up a lot more words not that I try to eavesdrop but there's times where it's just super noticeable next day I have free reign to ride the motorcycle I will be very happy to put this on the motorcycle mount and see how well it does I think it will actually be a lot better than walking because the thing about motorcycles is um, they have a much smoother motion than legs walking legs walking are not smooth this is why a lot of film companies uh, create little train tracks or like crane claw for uh, their cinema cameras is to keep that smooth motion I mean it's why the gimbals are so popular I really want to get the gimbal uh, the DJI uh, OM5 for the phones that one does look really cool I'd like to start using my Xperia 5 again as a vlogging phone camera just because I really like the Xperia 5 it's super light super compact it's a really good phone now would I trade it for the Xperia 5 mark two or three absolutely oh my goodness the mark three series is unbelievable but 
I have the Xperia Pro, which fits in a really weird spot, and I feel like Sony kind of screwed it over. As amazing of a phone as it is, I'm just going to say it, 5G blows. I live in what's supposed to be the best 5G city in the world, and I have literally never seen my 5G service signal turn on. And I have the best 5G phone on the market. There, I, to my knowledge, there is no other phone with the 5G nanomillimeter antennas like the Sony Xperia Pro. And I have never seen it. And maybe it's because I'm not like directly at a 5G connection, but like seriously, if I'm in Shibuya, Ginza, Shinjuku, Akihabara, Harajuku, I should get something Tokyo. I mean, Tokyo the city, not just Tokyo the generalized city. All of them. Out of the 23 districts of Tokyo, I have never seen 5G service. And sure, I could probably have better a better plan. And when I'm fully working, I definitely plan to upgrade. But still, I'm supposed to be having 5G. And I have never seen it. I've seen it dip down to H+. I don't even know what H plus is supposed to be. I was riding the train and I get to a city called Hachioichi, which is technically the name of my city, but I'm in like a different district of it. But like the main Hachioichi where the station is, where everybody actually knows Hachioichi. Um, it's ridiculous because of the fact that I'm taking the train. We're not even going through tunnels. If we were going through tunnels, I could totally get it. But, like, there's no tunnels. And we're still above ground. Quite a, bit, quite, a, quite a ways above ground. But I'm watching it go from 4G, LTE, 3G, to H+. And then I had to restart the phone because all my apps started, like, freaking out for some reason. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Ooh, coming down now. I love the rain. But yeah, I'm supposed to be getting 5G, and I have never seen it. But I would love to get into the business of like filming and broadcasting, and all my stuff is already set up for this. Like if I set up my Xperia Pro to either of my professional cameras, the A7R4 or the A7S3, I could be broadcasting 4K footage on a 5G network, but, I don't, I, but I've never seen 5G. They say if you're in, um, if you're in a sports stadium, like a big baseball or soccer stadium or in America's case, American football, you're supposed to get really good coverage and I could see that being the case like if I was at the Olympics but that's the thing I didn't get to go to the Olympics I was super bummed out about that because one of my plans for moving to Japan last year was trying to get hired on as a sports photographer for the Olympics and granted I don't have quote unquote a sports camera I can make either of my cameras work as a sports camera I could dumb down the R4 so it writes files faster or I could speed up the S3 with the uh, CF Express Type A cards so the so I can keep shooting non-stop sure they're only 12 megapixels but they still look great it, I believe it's more the glass than the camera sensor is important, but as long as you have a clean sensor and you're over 10 megapixels, uh, if you have professional glass, that's what makes all the difference. But yeah, no, like, my setup's really good. Like, what's really cool about having Sony 
and why it's really hard to go anyone else especially Nikon no offense to Nikon shooters but Sony is a tech company not just a camera company this is where they excel over Canon and Nikon and Fuji I like Fuji though except for its weird crop factor that's the only thing I don't like about Fuji but um but yeah like you can have an Xperia Pro hooked up broadcasting with 5G you can have a battery grip for extra batteries or you could just plug it in straight up USB-C and not worry about battery life at all and to me that's super awesome and then like if you have the A9 A92 no A92 or the A1 you can then plug straight into an Ethernet port and not even worry about 5G if you have straight up uh, strong internet connection through a wired connection which is the best way to go but Sony just keeps bringing the tech behind everything I always look forward to seeing new Sony lenses because they really do push the market forward uh, the next two lenses I want to see from them are a new 24 to 70 G Master f2.8 and a 70 to 200 G Master f2.8 and I don't really care if they're not like super super durable like the original sets I want to see them faster lighter and much better image quality I don't care about durability so much because I'm not one of those people who drops their lenses I think that's just stupid I just hear these youtubers talk about oh I dropped my bloody lens and it cost me like 900 quid yeah I'm talking about Kai if you ever watch Kai he's sometimes really funny I'd love to hang out with him love to hang out with him and Locke Locke's hilarious I love the way Locke talks I'm not making fun of his voice but I'm just saying the way he talks is really funny BMW. That's really the only foreign cars you'll see in Japan are nicer European styles. And again, that comes to more car enthusiasts with the wealthier people. I like Japanese cars. The number one car I would get more than anything if I could is the new Sony Vision S beautiful car B-E-A beautiful I really hope Sonny makes it mostly due to the fact that I don't see the traditional car companies making electric cars. I don't. Toyota's being super hesitant. They're, the president of Toyota is making ridiculous like claims. Oh, if we start making EVs, thousands of people will lose jobs. I don't believe that. Working for Tesla. I know for a fact that you need a full task force. You need lots of people. Electric cars require just as much manpower as standard cars. So that whole thing is so not true. I see the future of vehicles 
in electronics companies whether it's Apple whether it's Sony whether it's whoever um, I just don't see the future of cars remaining in the hands of traditionalist car companies the biggest problem when it comes to traditional style cars don't get me wrong I'm not against uh, people who have them the problem is we've been using the exact same combustion engine style for the last hundred plus years since the dawn of the car's creation so it's a real shame that we're still using such an old design yeah it's gotten better but it's nothing new like Tesla's one of the first true new concepts we've had in a very long time and we've had electrics before Tesla but the problem is they always get shut down same reason the US in the 1800s had the best railway system in the world but come the dawn of the 1900s and mass marketing of cars all of that changed oh the dreaded ticket booth with showing up as everybody's leaving means the train's already here and it's gonna go so even if you run at full speed up these stairs you will not catch it unless it is a stop that stays around okay so I was a little wrong with this one I could have caught this But this is a special semi express and it does not go to my stop. So I have to wait ten minutes for the next one. So with that being said, it's gonna be ten minutes of nothing happening. So I'm gonna end this here. Bye everyone.
so to complete my thoughts on the Movio 1034K. Maybe it's 1003-4K. I don't know. It's a weird name. But the Movio camera, Movio, Movio, I, I don't know how to, how to really pronounce it. I can honestly say without a doubt, avoid this camera. It may be cheap, and I understand that. I really do. I would have loved to have an action camera when I was a teenager, when I was riding my bike everywhere, when I was, you know, active and doing things and having fun. But this is where I'm going to say support good used market. And the reason for this, I have gotten really good things from places like eBay and Amazon Warehouse when their stuff was like open box. Or some people, and I, I even had to explain to my sensei about this, some people will buy something such as a GoPro or a DJI or a Sony or whatever the case may be. And they'll use it maybe for like a week. And I'm guilty of this because my DJI Mavic Air 2, which is a wonderful drone, I love it to death. I've only used it a good handful of times since I bought it last year uh, during the pandemic. And I'd like to use it more. I, I really would. But with Japan's strict drone regulations, they're not really laws. They're more like really strict guidelines that are laws but they're not like black and white they're really vague so i haven't i've only used it once since i moved here but go on ebay go on amazon craigslist most people will have something and they'll use it for a very short time and then they will forget about it and then be like oh yeah, remember when we bought that camera? Remember when we got that GoPro, that DJI, that Sony, that Nikon, that Canon, and we never used it after that? Let, let's just let's just get some money back. Let's put it on eBay. Let's sell, you know, let's put a good deal. And a lot of times that is the case. My son and I were looking at GoPros. Uh, he really wanted one for an action cam for water usage, and GoPro is good for that. Um, I was really impressed by the GoPro Hero 6. Uh, we found, well, I found a really good one on eBay for him for about 200 something dollars. And it was more than he expected. And sometimes that's the best way to go. Just make sure that it works. Make sure it's uh, from a reliable seller. Uh, but as for this, $70 may seem cheap, but it's not that cheap. I, I'm going to explain. I actually had to return the product. So if you don't see it with me, there's a reason for that. I returned it because I was on the last day of the return policy and I really wanted to get my refund. And oh boy, is that hard to do in Japan, especially when you don't speak uh, Japanese fluently enough. But okay, so here are the major flaws. One, as you can see from the footage, even at 1080... 1080 should look a lot better than that. I know I probably could have boosted it up to 4K. I don't think that would have changed much. Just because something's in 4K does not mean it's high quality. Uh, it's better quality, but I wanted it for performance. Um, I didn't see the image stabilization being that smooth, especially on the walking vlog. Even on the motorcycle footage, I wasn't really enjoying it too much. Um... What else? Oh, yes. This is the one that I had to say big N-O to. It will record whenever it feels like. If you have it plugged into the charger, it will start recording on its own. I had to delete, like, so many, so many videos from the card because it wants to record by itself. Super annoying. Also, this is... It's not that big of a deal, but at the same time, it's really irritating. It will break up all the files into three-minute sections. 
and I thought there was something inherently wrong when, like, I thought it was recording and stopping and starting and doing whatever it wanted to do, but in the card, it just breaks things into three-minute little sections. I can't stand that. I really can't tolerate that for so many reasons. And a big reason for that is I want to go through my video and just scroll through, find the spot I want to see, and go from there. And that's fine. I like that. And most cameras don't have this problem, no matter what camera you're talking about. But this one, everything's in these three minutes segments, and that's really annoying. When I was at the store trying to get a refund, they were trying to ask me all these things because they did not want to give me a refund. Um, but they were trying to be like, well, you need a memory card. It's like, I had a memory card. And it's like, well, what kind of memory card? It's like a Samsung memory card. It's like, is that good? It's like, yeah, Samsung cards are good. There's three cards that I think are the best, and that is SanDisk, Samsung, and Sony. They are the three go-to brands. I don't trust Chinese brands. I don't trust no-name cards. I'm very picky. Um, if it's a big-name company like Toshiba, I don't know if Toshiba makes cards. Honestly, I, I don't know a lot of card manufacturers, uh, but there are a lot of card brands out there if i know the company and i know that they have a strong presence then that's cool uh seagate if seagate makes good hard drives that they made memory cards i'd be inclined to believe you know they make a good memory card because they make good hard drives so uh but that's not always the case but i try to make sure i buy from good brands and so samsung is a good brand for that not my favorite company but good stuff they make a good Chromebook, but, um, but yeah, they were trying to go through all these, like, well, maybe it was the card. It's like, no, the card works great. I used it from my drone and the drone had no problems. It was a, it was a fine card. Um, the 64 gig thing is super annoying. Uh, I really, I cannot recommend this camera. Avoid it. Save up a little more. Like, if you can save up 200 to get something really good, slightly used, that market is probably your, going to be your best bet. The other two things that I cannot tolerate with this camera, number one, the microphone sounds horrible. And you're stuck with that microphone. Um, unless you plan to... Uh, mute all your videos and then put your own audio over them that's one option but I just think let's say you're a vlogger let's say there's an event the the microphone sounds awful and then the standard photos uh, I'm gonna show some in the video I only took a few but it, it didn't change much they are some of the worst looking JPEGs I've ever seen and I'm comparing this to non-expensive cameras as well I had a $200 cheap Sony smartphone back in the day and this was like I was trying to get back I was trying to get into the Android ecosystem because I was tired of weird off-brand stuff I bought a Windows phone and at first that Windows phone was actually pretty cool it was the Lumia 950 XL and it was a wild phone, man. It really was. It had a cool form factor. It had a beautiful camera. It was pretty quick. Um, Windows 10 was kind of nice. Cortana was cool to have as a base uh, voice assistant. Uh, what it could do for like connecting to Xbox and PC was kind of cool. I know you can do that with uh, Android as well. But the way that it did it, especially being like five, six years ago, it, it was a wild phone. But... It would crash all the time. It didn't get very many games or apps. Um, it it was kind of cool, but at the same time, it was not a very good phone. I remember some guy at the Sprint store was trying to tell me, yeah, but Windows phones never crash. It's like, you've never used one because I've had to pull the battery from this all the time. So I was, I was really desperate to go from, okay, the... The Lumia's being really irritating, and I remember getting my my first new car, and 
I really wanted that Android Auto feature, so I got a Sony L1. And the L1 was interesting because it was a cheap little camera. Well, it was a cheap little phone, but that camera was what really impressed me. And I just think a $200 budget smartphone from Sony has a better camera than an actual camera that's only made as a camera. And yeah, I know it's $70, but at the same time, if it's built as a camera and it's using a Sony sensor, why is it so bad? I, I don't get it. But ultimately, the verdict is, don't buy it. Save your money, save up to at least $200, get something really good on the used market, a GoPro Hero 6, GoPro 5, a DJI, an Osmo Action Cam, Sony FDRX 3000. Um, there are lots of choices. Don't buy the wrong ones. Um, it's fine to have something that's not the best, but at the same time, get what's best for you. And something that works and that's easy to use is the better alternative. And that's all I'm going to say on this. It does not get a passing score. It is not a good camera. And I've tried to look at all the pros that I can about this. The only pro straight out of the box is its price tag. And that's not enough. But anywho, Samurai signing off. All right, so to complete my thoughts on the Movio 1034K. Maybe it's 1003 4K, I don't know. It's a weird name. But the Movio camera, Movio, Movio, I, I don't know how to, how to really pronounce it. I can honestly say without a doubt, avoid this camera. It may be cheap, and I understand that. I really do. I would have loved to have an action camera when I was a teenager, when I was riding my bike everywhere, when I was, you know, active and doing things and having fun. But this is where I'm going to say support good used market. And the reason for this, I have gotten really good things from places like eBay and Amazon Warehouse when their stuff was like open box, or some people, and I, I even had to explain to my sensei about this, some people will buy something such as a GoPro or a DJI or a Sony or whatever the case may be, and they'll use it maybe for like a week. And I'm guilty of this because my DJI Mavic Air 2, which is a wonderful drone, I love it to death, I've only used it a good handful of times since I bought it last year uh, during the pandemic. And I'd like to use it more. I, I really would. But with Japan's strict drone regulations, they're not really laws. They're more like really strict guidelines that are laws, but they're not like black and white. They're really vague. So I haven't, I've only used it once since I moved here. But go on eBay, go on Amazon, Craigslist. Most people will have something and they'll use it for a very short time. And then they will forget about it and then be like, oh, yeah, remember when we bought that camera? Remember when we got that GoPro, that DJI, that Sony, that Nikon, that Canon, and we never used it after that? Let, let's, just, let's just get some money back. Let's put it on eBay. Let's sell... You know, let's put a good deal. And a lot of times that is the case. My son and I were looking at GoPros. Uh, he really wanted one for an action cam for water usage. And GoPro is good for that. Um, I was really impressed by the GoPro Hero 6. Uh, we found, well, I found a really good one on eBay for him for about 200 something dollars. And it was more than he expected. And sometimes that's the best way to go. Just make sure that it works. Make sure it's uh, from a reliable seller. Uh, but as for this, 
$70 may seem cheap, but it's not that cheap. I, I, I'm i going to explain. I actually had to return the product. So if you don't see it with me, there's a reason for that. I returned it because I was on the last day of the return policy and I really wanted to get my refund. And oh boy, is that hard to do in Japan, especially when you don't speak uh, Japanese fluently enough. But... Okay, so here are the major flaws. One, as you can see from the footage, even at 1080, 1080 should look a lot better than that. I know I probably could have boosted it up to 4K. I don't think that would have changed much. Just because something's in 4K does not mean it's high quality. It's better quality, but I wanted it for performance. Um, I didn't see the image stabilization being that smooth. Especially on the walking vlog. Even on the motorcycle footage, I wasn't really enjoying it too much. Um, what else? Oh, yes. This is the one that I had to say big N-O to. It will record whenever it feels like. If you have it plugged into the charger, it will start recording on its own. I had to delete, like, so many so many videos from the card because it wants to record by itself super annoying also this is it's not that big of a deal but at the same time it's really irritating it will break up all the files into three minute sections and i thought there was something inherently wrong when like i thought it was Recording and stopping and starting and doing whatever it wanted to do, but in the card it just breaks things into three minute little sections. I can't stand that. I really can't tolerate that for so many reasons. And a big reason for that is I want to go through my video and just scroll through, find the spot I want to see, and go from there. And that's fine. I like that and most cameras don't have this problem no matter what camera you're talking about but this one everything's in these three minutes segments and that's really annoying when I was at the store trying to get a refund they were trying to ask me all these things because they did not want to give me a refund um, but they were trying to be like well you need a memory card it's like I had a memory card and it's like well what kind of memory card it's like a Samsung memory card it's like is that good? It's like, yeah, Samsung cards are good. There's three cards that I think are the best, and that is SanDisk, Samsung, and Sony. They are the three go-to brands. I don't trust Chinese brands. I don't trust no-name cards. I'm very picky. Um, if it's a big-name company like Toshiba, I don't know if Toshiba makes cards. Honestly, I, I don't know a lot of card manufacturers, uh, but there are a lot of card brands out there if i know the company and i know that they have a strong presence then that's cool uh seagate if seagate makes good hard drives that they made memory cards i'd be inclined to believe you know they make a good memory card because they make good hard drives so uh but that's not always the case but i try to make sure i buy from good brands and so samsung is a good brand for that not my favorite company but good stuff they make a good Chromebook, but, um, but yeah, they were trying to go through all these, like, well, maybe it was the card. It's like, no, the card works great. I used it from my drone and the drone had no problems. It was a, it was a fine card. Um, the 64 gig thing is super annoying. Uh, I really, I cannot recommend this camera. Avoid it. Save up a little more. Like, if you can save up 200 to get something really good, slightly used, that market is probably your, going to be your best bet. The other two things that I cannot tolerate with this camera, number one, the microphone sounds horrible. And you're stuck with that microphone. Um, unless you plan to... Uh, mute all your videos and then put your own audio over them that's one option but I just think let's say you're a vlogger let's say there's an event the the microphone sounds awful 
And then the standard photos, uh, I'm going to show some in the video. I only took a few, but it, it didn't change much. They are some of the worst looking JPEGs I've ever seen. And I'm comparing this to non-expensive cameras as well. I had a $200 cheap Sony smartphone back in the day. And this was like, I was trying to get back. I was trying to get into the Android ecosystem because I was tired of weird off brand stuff. I bought a windows phone and at first that windows phone was actually pretty cool. It was the Lumia 950 XL. And it was a wild phone, man. It really was. It had a cool form factor. It had a beautiful camera. It was pretty quick. Um, Windows 10 was kind of nice. Cortana was cool to have as a base uh, voice assistant. Uh, what it could do for like connecting to Xbox and PC was kind of cool. I know you could do that with uh, Android as well. But the way that it did it, especially being like five, six years ago, it, it was a wild phone. But... It would crash all the time. It didn't get very many games or apps. Um, it it was kind of cool, but at the same time, it was not a very good phone. I remember some guy at the Sprint store was trying to tell me, yeah, but Windows phones never crash. It's like, you've never used one because I've had to pull the battery from this all the time. So I was, I was really desperate to go from, okay, the... The Lumia's being really irritating, and I remember getting my my first new car, and I really wanted that Android Auto feature, so I got a Sony L1, and the L1 was interesting because it was a cheap little camera. Well, it was a cheap little phone, but that camera was what really impressed me, and I just think a $200 budget smartphone from Sony has a better camera than an actual camera that's only made as a camera. And yeah, I know it's $70, but at the same time, if it's built as a camera and it's using a Sony sensor, why is it so bad? I, I don't get it. But ultimately, the verdict is, don't buy it. Save your money. Save up to at least $200, get something really good on the used market, a GoPro Hero 6, GoPro 5, a DJI, an Osmo Action Cam, Sony FDRX 3000. Um, there are lots of choices. Don't buy the wrong ones. Um, it's fine to have something that's not the best, but at the same time, get what's best for you. And something that works and that's easy to use is the better alternative. And that's all I'm going to say on this. It does not get a passing score. It is not a good camera. And I've tried to look at all the pros that I can about this. The only pro straight out of the box is its price tag. And that's not enough. But anywho... Samurai signing off.